is not a teaching night. It's a night of afflicting men with fire. We can differ in doctrine, not in fire. Our doctrine can be different. We can argue when it comes to doctrine. But when it is fire, there's no argument. A man who is on fire is on fire. This is why the testimony of fire is the testimony of service in the heights of Zion. A man who is not on fire has no witness before God. Elohim is a burning furnace. The Bible said that our God is a consuming fire. And only burning flames can stand before him. Maria Kivasi Venatafika Pari. Rekindo Sapari Kafira Kazira Fira Kinondre Kivak Zadivi Nativa Kibari Katoa Delindo Fratira Sibaki Patekibo Rinata Fira Radianda Subrakte Zazirish Batigados Katavidi Rakina Pendaria Tabak Rekidondre Patili Givonda Sinis Zanzizi Zaziza Baronde Kibarakatea Oh, he mini a pano gimma. That's all you are. That's all you are. That's all you are. Oh, he mini a pano gimma. That's all you are. That's all you are. That's all you are. The hand of God is coming upon a young lady. This lady, your grandmother was an intercessor. Your mother was an intercessor. And just two weeks ago, the Holy Ghost came to you and said, Your time has come. And you can't escape the hand of God. Where is that person? Father, Parque to Paris. Where is that intercessor? Please help her, help her, help her so we don't get distracted. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. Oh, here it is. Oh, I look at you, ma. Let me share with you for 10 minutes. And something will literally engulf this auditorium. I beg you in the name of God, don't be distracted. I beg you, pay attention. Don't be distracted. That's who you are. That's who you are. I want to share with you how to make contact with the fire of God. How to touch the fire of God. You can be an experienced minister, yet not be approved. You can be an oracle, yet not be approved. You can be educated, and more educated than everybody in your territory, yet not be approved. What qualifies a minister of God and a minister of the presence is the testimony of fire. The way God is served 
is by fire, not by oratorial prowess. The way God is served is by the burnings that erupt from the bellies of his servant. It is a reality that existed before time began. Everyone that has served in the mountain of God is a burning one. Without the flames of fire, your service has no stature before the immortals. The testimony of your service is the depth and the intensity of your flame. When spirits judge men, they don't judge them by how much they know. They judge them by the brightness of their illumination. That is why the angels of God, they burn with fire and they illuminate with light. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 7, it said concerning the angels, the angels are the high commissioners of God. The angels are the executioners of the purposes of Yahweh Elohim. Everything God wants to do, the creatures that carry it out are the angels. And it said concerning the angels, he maketh his angels spirits. But his ministers, what makes a man a minister is not whether he's a spirit or a man. Everybody that falls into the category of a minister, he said, this is his disposition. He is a flame of fire. So if an angel is not a flame of fire, he can't be a minister. If a man is not a flame of fire, he can't be a minister. There are too many orators on the pulpit. There are too many talkers on the pulpit. When the demons come, they don't respond to your English. They respond to the flames that burn from you. When Jesus entered the temple, he had not said a word. The demons began to scream. The intensity he came with provoked them. If you are not on fire, you can't serve in this kingdom. Packaging is not enough. All of us, we wear suit. All of us, we read from the Bible. But that is not what makes us ministers. What makes us ministers is whether or not we born with the fire of God. This is why everybody that wants to be used of God must hunger for fire. Jesus in John 2.17 said the zeal of my father's house, the burnings, the panting, and the illumination that comes from my spirit, it has eaten up my soul. He said as the bear panted after the water broke, so my soul longed for thee in a dry and in a thirsty land. You have not seen a beard who is thirsty. A thirsty beer can sense the smell of water from 200 meters away. We are not talkers. We are burning candles. When John entered heaven, the churches he saw were not buildings. They were lamps that were burning. How much illumination and fire can come out of your spirit. You Asians are your skin. Kadosh. Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. I went to school of ministry. I went to Bible school. It's not a credential in a spirit. An illiterate preacher in a village that has never seen a Bible school is a witness better than you. The fire that comes from your spirit is the testimony of your witness. Among men, you can use your certificate to make a point. But when spirit comes, they don't evaluate you based on your certificate. Because in the spirit realm, your certificate is paper. He has no tangibility in that realm. So when two ministers stand, it's not who went to a Bible school they will check. Who is born in for Yahweh? 
The testimony of fire is the testimony of witness. And if you don't know how to make contact with fire, you will deceive yourself for a long time. The day you are about to leave this realm, then you will discover you didn't make a mark in Zion. He said concerning John, he was a burning and a shining light. He was a burning. That was the only minister Jesus accredited. There were 318 Sanhedrin members. 318. Jesus didn't call any of them a minister. Meanwhile, these were the men that thought they were qualified. They were the men that came to probe the ministry of John and say, who are you? By what authority are you here? The men who thought they were more ministers than John, Jesus didn't know them. When Jesus showed up, the John that was being probed was the one Jesus accredited because John's ministry was a testimony of fire. When fire comes upon a man, what the fire does is that it reorganizes that man to be able to conduct God. God flows as energy. Only men who have been remodeled by fire can conduct God. Do you know how you, you make shapes? You cannot shape a matter until you melt that matter. So what fire does is fire makes you a minister. And a minister is not a preacher. A minister is not a teacher. A minister is not an apostle. A minister is a man who can conduct God to his generation. He can conduct God. When he shows up, God flows like a river. He said, God, who has sound three times and in diverse manner spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophet, has in this last day spoken to us by his son, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his presence. When Jesus stands, what you see is Abba, Father. He says, show us the Father that we may see him. He said, whoever has seen me, has seen the Father. I didn't come to preach. I didn't come to teach. I came to flow God to you. The God that was hid in the spirit. The God that was locked away. I came to bring you God. But the way to model a man to be able to conduct God is when he's carried through fire. That's why in Malachi 3.2, they said, God will appear in a sanctuary. He will thoroughly pour the sons of liver that they can bring an acceptable offering unto the Lord. How much of God can you conduct? Is the testimony of how much fire you have walked into. Because sometimes your bandwidth will be able to conduct 1% of God. So God takes you to the fire. And as he melts you, he opens your chamber. And then you begin to flow 10%. And then he melts you. He opens your chamber. Every time you want to model a matter, you melt that matter. So fire makes you a minister. Most of us run from fire. We run. And then we think we are smart. After 50 years in ministry, you will look around and discover there is no seal of your apostleship. Oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you. I want to burn for you. Oh Lord, set my life in order for you. I want to burn for you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, set my life in order for you. I want to burn for you. Oh Lord. Set my life on fire for you. I want to burn. Bakila Pasepena Kabias. You will struggle with masturbation for a long time until you are baptized with fire. You will be teaching from the altar, but your comment will be filthy. You will know you have no authority in the spirit. Because when you want to challenge the demons, they will remind you who you are. Men can't see you, but we see. 
You don't have authority here. I know the men that born. You are not one of them. You will struggle with immorality until fire comes. Because what fire will do is that it will alter your set of appetites. It will re-engineer you from within. So that portion of you that the devil has taken over, that is given to fornication, that portion that is given to adultery, that portion that is given to lie, the fire will melt it. Because the only thing that comes out of fire is what the Holy Ghost fed. So when you show up, you become a conductor of the spirit of Elohim. In Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 to 7, he said in the year that King Hosea died, I saw the Lord. He was a national prophet, a revered prophet. He was giving word of knowledge. He was giving prophetic word. But he said, I saw the Lord. And he discovered something. When he saw the true ministers in Zion, he realized he was not a minister. He was a prophet, but he was not a minister. Because when he wanted to check what ministers look like, they had only one utterance. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. What it means is that we have been separated from everything. We are consecrated to the Holy One. The reason is because once upon a time, I was strong to addiction. I was connected to immorality. I was connected to lie. When fire came, it burnt it off. So why you check me now? The only thing I resonate with is God. So when they say holy, holy, they were showing him the testimony of the presence. Only men who are separated to God can serve the Holy One. And the man looked at them and said, oh, I'm a man of unclean lips. A prophet that his weapon was his mouth. A prophet that was supposed to bring a nation to the altar of righteousness. When he appeared in Zion, he said, I'm a man of uncleanness. If he knew 20 years ago, he wouldn't have been wasting his time. Because till that time, he was not a minister. And he said, one of the seraphims, the bunny ones, he said he took one of the coals with the tongue from the midst of the coals of fire. And he touched the stone. And instantly, the Holy One spoke. He said, who will go for us? He said, I will go. He had become a minister. We are weak because our secret lives stink. We are weak because among men we have a message. But in the spirit, we have no testimony. The world will not be changed by message. The world will be changed by witnesses. And a man is a witness when he has a testimony in the spirit. And what brings you to that order is when the fire that burns in between the coals touches you. Don't desire to be an apostle. Don't desire to be a prophet. Don't desire to be a messenger of God in the political world or in the economic world. Desire to burn. When you begin to burn, God will send you to politics. And when you come there, all you need to do is to burn. And as you burn, you will bring light to your generation. When you begin to burn, God will send you to the altar. When you come there, you will burn. How pathetic it is for a preacher to be checked in the spirit. And what comes out of him is a dark book. Instead of a flame. And then we show up. With intelligent messages. From Bible concordance. And we are arguing doctrine. And in the spirit when they show up. They are looking for the man that speaks for God. They can't find one. Hallelujah. 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 In the days of the fathers, if a stranger is passing through a land and he doesn't have a place to stay, they say that is the house of the man of God. The gear can go there and spend one week and she will live there burning for God. 
try it now, she will become pregnant. Oh. Meanwhile, we are a generation of Rema talkers. We have all the revelation, but there is no testimony in the spirit. An evangelist comes and organizes a crusade and he leaves the offering and pastors are fighting over the offering. How can you be like that evangelist? There is a connection through greed to mammon. There is a connection through immorality to Jezebel. You are not a minister. A testimony of witness is the testimony of fire. When fire comes, it reengineers. That's when you will discover that your lying tongue, something will happen to the alignment of the tongue. So even when you felt like lying, you will say the truth. You know why? A man who is under fire doesn't know courtesy. The fire will defy courtesy. Even when you want to wear your clothes, you can't. The fire will make sure you observe the protocol of its intensity. Have you seen a pregnant woman? She doesn't even realize she's naked. Something is burning her. She can't hold herself. A man of fire only follows what the fire dictates. That's why witness is by fire. Too many Christians, little or no witness. The second thing about fire is that it energizes you. The energy for service comes when a man is born in. You want to see a man who is serving God without stress. You want to see a man who is serving God without relenting. Don't check his stature. Don't check his looks. Check what is burning on his inside. It's like a train. So long as the coals are put and the fire is up, the train will keep moving. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, from verse 25. Listen to why Paul and Barnabas did what they did. This was the apostolic council in Jerusalem. After the council meeting took place, they were sending emissaries to the body of Christ in Antioch. And they said, it seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send choosing men unto you with beloved Barnabas and Paul. See their testimony in the next chapter. It says, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. See the next chapter. I said, we have sent here for Judas and Silas, who shall tell you the same thing by mouth. What was the difference between Paul, Barnabas, and Judas and Silas? Some of them were messengers, others were witnesses. Men who have asserted. You know, there are certain men that when God is sending them, God has to assure them they will be safe. There are other men, God is the one that is telling them, please cool down, cool down, cool down. They are, they are burning. They are so on fire that God is the one that brings caution. He said, the man that has this coming, Paul was in, on his way to Jerusalem. He said, seven men spoke by the Spirit and forbade him. Paul said, I am going to Jerusalem as a prisoner. Archippus came, took his clock and said, the man that owns this, this is what will happen to him. Acts 20, 22, he said, I go to Jerusalem bound in the spirit. Even God can't stop him again. So if you want to stop that man, God has to send angels to hold him down. It was Paul that was stoned to death. The believers surrounded him. He got up with injury on his body. He said, let's go to the next city. That is not a doctrine. That is a testimony of fire. Those are the type of men that can invade the hinterlands. We have many preachers. All the headquarters are in the cities. If you go to the village, you will not find Christ. Many villages today, they are still living by idols. Because all the preachers are looking for the comfort zone. How many messengers come to the north? All the crusades are in the west. Why? When fire comes, ministry is no longer about the location. It's about where the people are. So some of the evangelists have to reduce from Lagos and Portacot. Some of the evangelists need to go to Medugri. Some of the evangelists need to come to Makodi. Some of the evangelists need to come to Mubi in Adamawa State. 
But there is no fire. So there are no men who are willing to hazard their lives. That is why it looks as if certain areas are starving of the gospel. Meanwhile, the gospel came to Africa because some men were on fire. Missionaries. They died. They were to be taken to their country. They said, no, bury us here. We want our bones many years from now to be a memorial that men travel for the gospel. Don't take my body home. I spent my life in Africa. Why will you carry my body home? My bones will remain in Africa as a testimony. What has fire pushed you to do for God? Sometimes you preach certain messages. Then you hear people. Wisdom is profitable to direct. And what they call wisdom is selfishness and self-centeredness. Sometimes it looks pathetic. You see an evangelist that is burning with fire. Is wearing bow tie and doing pastoring in a church. And it's obvious that the mantle on his life is not for the four war. But he's looking for a salary to survive. Because there's no fire. It's all about safety and security. No man can stake his neck. In Esther chapter 4 verse 16 She was enjoying the comfort of the palace And Mordecai came to her And said don't think You will be spared And I want you to know That God Brought you into the kingdom At such a time as this For a purpose And instantly the scale fell off her eyes Most of you who have been hiding in your comfort zone, the scale will fall off your eyes. And she said, take a fast for me. And I too will fast for three days. Although it is not lawful to come into the king at this time. But if I perish, I perish. That's the utterance of fire. You are not going into the ministry for self-preservation. You are going into the ministry with a verdict on your shoulder. If I perish, I perish. That's why God will have the liberty to send you anywhere he wants. Now, pastors lobby. They lobby to be posted to cities. And that's why the same people we raise, they cannot bear witness in the territory where they go to. The policeman who is, an, is, a, is not aware that he's an apostle to the police force. And then the boss comes and tells him, take bribe. Are you mad? How dare you? Are you not aware I'm a Christian? But he doesn't want to be posted to the village. He wants to remain in the city. So for that, he will deny his faith and begin to take bribe and bring return. If we raise them as apostles, they will know they are apostles to the police force. That time has come in the body of Christ where an officer will tell his, his master to hell with you. I will not take that bribe. And if you like, post him to a village. When you send him to that village, after four months, you will discover that a revival has begun in that village. Because the fire that he carries will turn the village upside down. That's how the apostles traveled. They traveled on the wings of persecution. When you throw them to one direction, a revival begins. He said, and Philip went to Samaria. He wasn't posted there. A, a persecution threw him there. He preached Christ there. The city was full of joy. A deacon suddenly, as he was preaching in Samaria, something through that persecution had changed him. Because that persecution is a furnace. And the deacon, who was only serving food, suddenly went to Samaria. And when he spoke, demons flew. Cripples began to walk. When did he receive that training? Persecution taught him how to walk in power. We don't see mighty things because we run away from the fire. You will be a policeman and you will live on your salary for 35 years. When you resign, you will discover you wasted your life. The reason is because you ran from fire. 
If you challenge your boss once, even if they want, they should send you to a village where there is no light. That place will become an avenue for you to wake up in the spirit. And every night, when you should sleep under fire, because of the heat, you now begin to walk outside. After three months, one day you'll be walking like that, and an angel will appear to you. That was how Philip entered power. When they ordained them, only Stephen was moving in power. But persecution came. And when they accepted persecution, persecution became their teacher. In Daniel chapter 3 from verse 13, they came to the king and told him, those Hebrew boys that you gave favor to, they have gone against your order. And the Bible said, and Nebuchadnezzar was full of rage and fury and commanded to bring Shedra, Misha, and Apadneko. Then they brought these men before the king. Do you know what it means to be a slave and then they bring you before a raging king? You have no idea. Your life is in his hand. And he said, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? Oh, Shedra, that is the rage. He was just wondering what he will do to these boys. Is it true? Is it true? Because where the word of the king is, there is power. They are not used to disobedience. Is it true that you do not serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? He said, go. God help you. When I hear the sound of that trumpet, and you refuse to power, have you been there before? And then the commissioner calls you, and say, so you like this, you dare violate my authority. If you have no fire, you will kneel down and deny your faith. But the Bible called them Hebrew boys. They were not men. They were boys. And they said, O oh king, go to the next verse. He said, we will not be careful to answer you in this matter. We will not be careful we will not be cautious. We will not, we will not exercise fear and subject ourselves to your intimidation. On this matter, we honor you because you are king. But on this matter, we will not be careful. I wish a generation will rise that can challenge the status quo and tell any authority, regardless of their rank, I will not be careful on the matters of my faith. There's one of my senior friends in the East. He works with the Anglican Communion, Venerable Moses Omeke. When he was admitted to the university, he began to pray in tongues every night until the demonic security men got tired. And they said they were going to expel him. They reported him to the chief security officer. That's a boy at the time. And when the chief security officer invited him, he said, why are you discussing the whole campus, disturbing the whole campus with prayer? And the man said, when has prayers become disturbance? We will not be careful to answer you in this matter. If you become careful, you will be intimidated. And if you are intimidated, you will lose your boldness. And if you lose your boldness, you will lose your faith. When has prayer become disturbance? And the chief security officer said, eh, go. The next time I hear that you prayed like that, you will leave this school. And he said, before I leave, let me ask you a question. When you admitted us and you gave us forms to fill, did you not have a provision for a hobby? He said, those that choose football as their hobby, as they are playing and making noise, did you disturb them? He said, no. Those who are playing basketball, I'm making noise. Did you disturb them? No. He said, go and check my form and see what I wrote as hobby. He said, my hobby is prayer. So don't disturb me. We will not be careful in this matter. You know how it happens. When you say that, they will want to respond based on their threat. Don't bother. You have brought witness. 
At that time, the battle has moved from among men to among spirits. If you reach that level, you have just shifted the battleground from the realm of mortars to the realm of immortals. And they cast them into the fire according to the word of the king. And suddenly the Bible said the king looked and said, who is the fourth man on the fire? That man doesn't need introduction. He said he looks like the son of the highest. You ancient Zion's king. Gado. Gado. You are mighty on. The energy for service, it comes from fire. I am an only son. My dad literally is afraid every day. He calls me to advise me. Marry now. Marry. Because he's afraid something may happen to this boy. Because when he calls today, I'm in Jalingo. If he calls tomorrow, I'm in Yobe. He calls tomorrow, I'm in Mubi. And why is he always traveling like this boy? He shouldn't die. Yo. If he dies, what will become of me? And one of those days, we were traveling from Makodi to Ukari when the crisis was heavy. And when we came to Zakibian, usually the thief driver cannot cross, they will kill him. Neither can the Jukun driver cross from the other side. So when we came, they dropped us and said the only way we can travel is when the full and the drivers pass. That morning, there was already a crisis and there were dead men on the road. So they were expecting a repressor attack in the evening. And we were being women. And when I stood, I looked at my brother. Before I said anything, the guy said, I am ready. I am ready. We have no message for Ukari people unless we prove that we are worthy. I said, you are ready. Let's go. And we crossed over. There was no military at the checkpoint. They ran away. But it was a place to prove whether we believe what we were saying. Your life will be demanded at some point. But when you get there, become like Paul and Barnabas. Don't look for the mantle of Paul. Look for the labors of Paul. If you enter the labor of Paul, the mantle of Paul will rest naturally. These be the men that has started their lives for the gospel. The reason many people lose their ministry is because they are not bold to dare. Because what they didn't know is that the road to greatness passed through a lot of persecution. So they run away. The Bible said something in Judges chapter 5 from verse 6. It said those were the days of Shamgar, the son of Adam, and the days of Jael. He said, then men did not have the boldness to walk through the street. You know what was happening? There was so much persecution that men ran away. And he said, in those days, I, Deborah, I rose as a mother in Israel. It was not the days of Deborah. According to the calendar of God, there was no day for Deborah. But there was a Shagar and a Jael that didn't maximize their day. And Deborah saw it as an opportunity. And she staked her neck. And when she rose, those were the days when the stars fought from their causes. The stars, what gives men power to command the constellation is when they are willing to die for their witness. You will never see dimensions of glory until you are willing to give your all. And that's what fire comes to do for you. If you are still fidgeting and hiding, you are taking safety, you are covering your head, you are not a minister. You are a businessman on the altar. A minister accepts the verdict of the cross before he began. He said, we thus charge that if one died for all, they that live no longer live for themselves, but they live for him that died. That was Paul speaking. And that's why I said he was able to hazard his life. We are the men of fire. They are scars. They are scars. In those days when God calls a man, he refuses. Because he knows ministry is not pleasure. He knows ministry is the journey of death. But in our days, 
people run out and hope that God will call them because they are pursuing money, they are pursuing fame, they are pursuing influence. In the days of the father, God troubles men. The Bible said Jonah ran away from the presence of God. He didn't want to go. God had to bring him into ministry in the belly of a whale. We want the glory of ministry and we don't know the death sentence that is under. Somebody will receive the baptism of fire. How does a man receive the fire of God? The first is by troubling the fire, the residual fire that is in your spirit on account of salvation. There's a fire that comes upon a man when he receives God. He's called your first love. So the first way to stay on fire is by, by staring and fanning the, the fire to flame. In Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12, it said the fire on the altar must not be put out. The priest must put wood on it every morning. If you lose your fire, you have lost your ministry. This is why we don't pray because we feel like. We pray because it's our life. He said men ought always to pray and not to faint. Luke 18 verse 1. Prayer is not a choice. Prayer is a sentence. If you are a man who wants to serve, you must keep burning. And the way to provoke it is by prayer. Luke 9, 28 and 29. As he prayed, the fashion of his continent was altered. His raiment glistered and he was like an angel. How did he provoke the fire? By tonguing. You are not on fire because you preach loud. You are on fire because the passion of God is consuming you. It's eating up your soul. The day you start struggling with prayer, know that your fire is already going down. If you are wise, shut down. We think ministry is preaching. Teaching is less than 10%. The labor of preaching and teaching is less than 10%. I heard a testimony of Dr. Paul and then that he had devil called him to preach for him and he was to talk for 25 minutes and he prayed in tongues for 45 hours. We want to talk because we think it's English language. Who told you you can talk English language with a fornicator and the fornicator will stop? Your words must be able to expel the demon that have enslaved her. And even when that demon is, go, is gone, there is a biochemical process, a neurological process, and a physiological process that have been set in motion. There are endocrine secretions at some time, she will naturally desire sex, even if the demon is gone, because she has experienced it. The same way, when it's 12 o'clock, you become hungry, because there are secretions going on. Your body wakes up to food. She has been awoken to another appetite. There must be power to be able to alter those secretions in her head. You think it's English language that makes that happen. The testimony of fire. How do you touch fire? The second is by baptism of fire. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. Is there baptize you with water unto repentance. But there is one mightier than I. That cometh. He said we baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That baptism comes. When one who is on fire transfers that fire to you. First Timothy 1 verse 6. This charge give I thee, Timothy, that you found to flame the gift of God that was imparted unto you by the laying on of my hands. Baptism of fire is the transference of fire from a recipient of fire to another. 
It is an error to listen to a man for one month and still be lukewarm. What it means is that the man you are listening to himself is not on fire. Because if you have fire, it will naturally spread. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8, it said, Being affectionately desirous of you, we did not only preach the gospel to you, we imparted the substance of our soul. That passion, that zeal that we have for God, it afflicts the hearer. If I share testimonies with you, you will run from this hall. Somebody called me from Atlanta, Georgia. He said, this is the 44th day. From the day I started listening to your clip, I couldn't eat. I have been fasting for 44 days. And he has not fasted 6 to 6 for the last 10 years. The gospel is not English language. It's a testimony of fire. And every one of us here must catch that fire tonight. I lost count of the testimonies. I lost count. I started counting but I couldn't. Because every day they keep coming. Is it about harlots? A lady called me from Italy. Traveled through Mali. Through the high sea. To Italy for prostitution. Her greatest undoing was that she heard a five minutes clip. And for two months. Even though she didn't have money to eat food. She preferred to keep her body. She said, I will never go there again. Because something happened to her that made the preservation of her body more important than food. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you. You have no gospel for your generation until you are born. For he maketh his angels spirits. His ministers, flames of fire. The third way to make contact with the fire of God is by impartation. And sometimes that impartation comes from heaven. Sometimes it comes from a man. Sometimes it comes from an angel. He said the angel took one of the coals and touched my tongue. A man is already wooed if his fire has gone down. What the devil wants to achieve is to quench your fire. They have seen your star in the spirit. They know you are a global apostle. They know you are supposed to be the president of your country. They know, so they come ahead of time. The devil knew that at the age of 30, Jesus will start a project. So when they saw his star, they came after him. He was eight days old. How do you know an eight days old child is a savior? Because the star bears the testimony of your ordination. So they know that in another five years, you will be the one shaking this state. So they come ahead of time and make you a fornicator. So that when that five year come and the gate of your ordination open, you will not have the energy to enter. This is why wise men are desperate for fire. And only desperate men receive the fire of God. I read the story of the whale reviver. And the man got tired. The iniquity everywhere. And there was nobody that could bring salvation. And he locked himself and began to pray. He began to pray. And he prayed like that. Until after three, four months. Something hit him. And the guy comes to church. He doesn't need to preach. Sometimes he collects the mic. And then he sits on the altar. 
and he begins to cry and he will cry for two hours no message and we were told in the story that sometimes up to five streets away hundred thousand people came to join him to cry it's not the volume it's the supply of the spirit a point came it was announced on radio that the police force stopped working for more than two years because there was nobody to arrest the fire had entered into the fabric of that civilization and he altered it they said even fifa world soccer was suspended in that year because it was to hold the netherlands and they had to reschedule because one man touched fire you don't know who you are he said he has put eternity in your heart most of you here are supposed to be the salvation of this state some of you are actually the salvation not of nigeria but of other nations outside nigeria they brought the analysis of my youtube page to me and youtube was showing me top 100 nations that my messages had affected i'm not saying 100 people top 100 nations because the messages had spread to over 5,000 nations so they gave me top 100 nations some of you are the salvation of united states of america the same u.s that you are struggling for visa to enter you don't know that you are supposed to be the father of the united states in this generation some of you are supposed to bet nations like canada some of you are supposed to bet nations like tanzania but you are not aware that in the council of the divine that nation was given to you as an inheritance until you go to heaven you now discovered you wasted your time he said, ask of me and I will give you the nations for an inheritance. If you know who you are, you will not rest one night until you are baptized with fire. You run, you run, you run, you run, God of I've not I've not reached where I want to go to but we're out of time I'm going to pray to God to baptize 50 hungry people here and believe me your life will change like the difference between night and day You don't know what can happen to you in one day. In one day, you have no idea. And that's why you don't know the price of fire. You don't know the price. It's a tall price in the spirit. But if you are desperate tonight, you want to jump up and tell the Lord, baptize me with fire. I'll give you five minutes to pray. If you were blessed by the message you just listened to and wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that he died for my sins and was raised from